Hello, Felmora here, and thanks for joining me on the seventh and last round of this Nation's Cup series where we'll be at Grand Valley. I'll have two races to recap here, and let's start off with the first race. Leg, of course, entering the first corner, I survive my way up into fifth position with a little bit of front end damage. Now we're going to skip to lap eight here, where my downward spiral begins coming into turn one where I end up cutting in front on the inside which causes the driver behind me to hit me which causes marshmallows to go flying and me to receive a penalty after hitting the barrier you see mr. yellow flag getting flagged there so we're gonna fast forward down to the hairpin where it just gets a little bit worse Coming out of the hairpin here is where the mistake is, applying power a little bit too early, coming, getting a little bit of assistance to get a 360. Coming out of it, I'm driving on dirt, which doesn't help me, crashing into the barrier, just further adding to my penalty. Tap the gas, try to recover. Looks like last position is going to take over, and now I'm last. Frustrated. I'm deciding what I want to do, and quitting is an option. I quit, go off to practice and get global ranking of top 1,000, then qualifying to the second position in the next race with a peak opportunity of 161 points. Now let's see if all that practice pays off. Coming into the first corner, it'll be less chaotic than the last race as I was definitely in the thick of things and no leg this time, which is good. Coming out of the first corner, we're going to enter the section where it can get tricky for some and you're going to see a little bit of dirt flying. We've got somebody in the rear crashing into a barrier. We've got myself taken first and already a 0.5 penalty served and you'll see what happened behind us, which was King Lexus crashing into the barrier, not one, not two, but three times, receiving 4.5 seconds. But not only to that, we'll see what happened the first up ahead as he received a two second penalty coming down into the hairpin. Already he's receiving a 0.5, he loses control. I know his pain, I was there literally a race before. Coming down into the bridge, where it's looking like this will be a close first lap. Coming into the final turns before the straights, any mistake here on the pylons can definitely set us back with a penalty, but it's looking good. We go through and coast. Lap 2 coming into the hairpin. We're going to go a little bit wider on Cage on 95 here, where he's unfortunately going to also meet the barrier here. We barely get through. He ends up joining the pack behind us, and they're also looking like they're struggling for a little bit of traction. And the group behind them on the same section here after the hairpin, they're also a little bit chaotic. But also, it's looking like a close race. On the second lap, coming down the bridge, I actually end up losing sight of the person behind me as they sit right in my blind spot. Thankfully that didn't distract me enough to the point of missing this breaking point. Coming through into this corner in VR, this gives you a good perspective. I get a good exit. Unfortunately, a Canadian goes down on the bridge. He does a, a good 180 recovery. Third lap, coming up to the bridge. O'Brien looking to take the inside. I get a better exit with the Supra's straight line speed, keeping first. Us three are going to enter the final section before the straight. Looking to make no mistakes or receiving any penalties we get through scot-free. I cannot say the same for this poor soul which hits the wall a couple times unfortunately. 
Doesn't receive a penalty for that, thankfully. Nor this. But, unfortunately, insult to injury has already been done, and King Lexus unfortunately goes through this pain again on this section. Hitting the wall to 4.5 seconds, he'll ultimately quit. O'Brien is on my tail as I was changing some settings and not paying attention and doing some bad driving there for a couple turns, but getting away here on this exit, I enter the next couple turns knowing that the previous lap he was taking the inside, so I look to take that this lap. Getting away, I have the faster car. We come down onto the seventh lap where O'Brien actually ends up making a mistake. Reduces some of the pressure on me and Ruby Tuesday behind him. Unfortunately, has to back off a little bit. They're slipping around. Now in the eighth lap, I come blindingly into the pit lane. So does everybody else. Somebody blares through here. And it's looking like we'll get out in third position with our tires well spent and ready the rocks and mediums. Coming out here on the ninth lap, we're going to enter the first corner a little bit fast. We're going to forget we have new tires and almost lose it. Up ahead, on the same lap, second actually ends up spinning, getting a 1.5 second, and we end up actually catching up the group of us. Coming into the same corner, you see everybody kind of trying to take a position, but also trying to be safe around these corners. I'm at the front there. Coming to the hairpin on the 10th lap, it looks like Ruby Tuesday receives a 0.5 penalty. He's going to have to scrub that off in the upcoming section near the bridge where O'Brien actually takes the inside and I mistakenly give him that position. After Ruby Tuesday serves his penalty, us three are going to enter the final section. Don't want to make a mistake now. We're almost done this race. Coming into the stretch, we're going to have to make up a little bit of distance as it looks like we're a little bit slower around those corners. Coming down the stretch though, definitely have the speed. Uh, try to take the inside, but you can definitely see Ruby Tuesday backed off a little bit. I backed off a little bit, but I also stayed on the inside there with a little bit of dirt and I didn't apply power and hit the side of the bridge. We're going to have some close racing here with Ruby Tuesday and myself as we head towards the hairpin. I'm going to take the outside where he's going to almost do an old switch route, but I got to trust Supra gearing. I keep on to the inside. Coming into a little bit of a tricky section. O'Brien ahead, taps the wall, so not out of grasp and I get tapped from behind from Ruby Tuesday, getting a little bit of separation. Our duo chase group has increased by one with K. John joining. We're tracking down Ruby on the bridge, we'll see if we can catch him. Coming into the hairpin on the 12th lap, I end up making a mistake by going wide, but it ends up saving me, which also you see K. John and Ruby having a little bit of contact. They went wide too. I reclaim third position, but no penalty, so that's good. With John on my tail, I actually end up losing a little bit here, and I actually go wide. Thankfully, no penalty, but unfortunately I cannot say the same for John, which behind me ends up losing a little bit 
on the same section and hits the corner a little bit head on receiving a 1.5 second penalty. Coming into the 14th lap I've got SS454 behind me applying some pressure. He's looking to take the inside but he actually backs off to the outside with me. I get a good exit but us three are coming down towards the hairpin. I actually end up getting a little bit of separation taking the turns a little bit faster. Might be with my later hit than SS. I don't know when he pitted. Coming through the hairpin, gotta trust the super gearing ratio going up to third. Looking firm in my mirrors. We look to coast through and hopefully not tap any walls or get any penalties like we did a couple laps ago, but coming through we get a good exit. A little bit of separation, but not enough to really amount to anything, so the bridge is going to be where I'm going to have to get a little bit of extra distance, but he looks like he makes a mistake just now. We're leaving a little bit of pressure. Coming into the final lap, you can see I don't have much of a gain on the competition behind me. I'm going to have to keep my pace high for the last lap. Coming into the first corner, I do just that. Looks like K. John and SS are pushing to their limits. Come down, don't want to touch the dirt too much, do not want to risk any slippage. Looks like everybody survives coming into the hairpin. Coming out of the hairpin, it looks a little bit congested behind. Hopefully it doesn't cause any issues as I coast through the last S turns. Not really pushing the car. Coming out of this exit though, I end up gaining some extra time, which I believe is what seals the deal. And with this race, it's off to the sunset for third position as this round of Nation Cup comes to an end. Crossing the finish line, it looks like I actually gained second because O'Brien screwed up his pit selection. So not a bad way to finish the Nation's Cup here at Grand Valley Highway. Earning 154 points for today's adventure. I can't say that was anything but a success and not a bad way to wrap up the Nations Cup. Definitely made some good decisions and some practice paid off and looking back it looks like I ended with 379 points total with my best three rounds being round seven, five, and four, being third in my province. Domestic rating in Canada, I was eighth. And in North America, I was 39th in the GT2 League. For my first Nations Cup, or Cup in general, or League, I think this was a success. I got better throughout the season as I got better with the competition, the cars, and I'm looking forward to the Manufacturer's Cup as I managed to get my driver rating up to A after going through Deep Forest and getting a lot of high podium and top five positions. Thank you for watching my final race here in the Nations Cup race. If you've been watching my series, thank you for following my journey and I'll be participating in the next journey in the Manufacturers Cup where in the GT1 League it'll definitely be more laps, more opportunity for errors and hopefully I adapt easily. Until then, we'll see you on the track.